The Celtics tried. They tried to make a move, but too expensive. So they stayed pat at 53. They ended up drafting J.D. Davison with the 53rd pick. And a few other things in the draft happened. Also, if you're watching, this thing happened on my face. We're going to talk about it all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can't. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making the show part of your daily routine. I am here for you Monday through Friday with a fresh new podcast that's free and available everywhere podcasts exist and available also on YouTube. And I would recommend watching the show on YouTube just to see this dumb thing on my face. So By the way, I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. And I was one of the media voters for the Celtics 75th anniversary team. I'm also the guy who decided to shave my gigantic old man beard off and say, hey, why don't we try to raise some money for charity if I'm going to do this? And so we raised $1,000, hit the target. $1,000 for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute the Heather Walker glioblastoma fundraising effort. Heather Walker is a vice president with the Celtics on their media relations side. She is battling this very aggressive, rare brain tumor and uh, raising a lot of money for research to try to end this. Uh, People have reached out to me as part of this fundraising effort, told me that it has impacted their family. So I'm I'm glad that we raised a little bit of money, $1,000 for that. Now, the the thing was, uh, by shaving, by by raising the $1,000, I offered to shave my beard into whatever dumb thing uh, people voted for. And the vote was for this dumb monkey tail look. It came from my former partner at RedsArmy.com, Chuck McKenney. And also, uh, I don't know if it's Julio or Julio Resende uh, down in New Zealand, but both of you made the suggestion And uh, that suggestion won the poll on Twitter. So for those of you watching on YouTube, I have a strip starting on the side of my face, coming down across my chin, wrapping up around my mustache. And then it just looks like a big monkey tail. I don't know what kind of monkey this would be. Maybe a a macaque of some sort, something with the black and white, uh, something with a very long prehensile tail which is what monkeys have. Uh, yeah, this, so this is uh, this is my look for the podcast. S- left side of my face, clean shaven, ready to go for summer. Right side of my face, a big swirl, like someone left, like it almost looks like um, hair going down a drain. Just a big swirl going down the drain. Nice visual for those of you who say, oh, great, I'm not watching the show on YouTube. So I'm going to be, now when people, you don't know, I have this like, I can see myself as I'm recording. So I have this dumb, ridiculous thing on my face and I'm going to have to try to get through this half hour of not laughing at the ridiculousness of this thing. Okay, thank you very sincerely to everyone who donated. It's very, I'm very happy that this, Stupid little, I'm going to shave my beard thing actually raised a thousand dollars for a good cause. So that makes me feel good heading into a Friday. I'm so happy that people were able to donate. Everybody who donated, some people donated $15, $15 some people donated $150. Uh, every single bit of that was impactful and very helpful. And I know that you're reaching into a po- your pocket to donate whatever you can. And that's the part that means the most that you said, okay, I, I don't have this right now. I have $15 I can spare right now. 
that that means a lot to me. Um, so that that's thank you. All right, let's get to the draft. Enough of this beard sh- sh- stuff. <laughs> I'm <gonna> censor myself. <laughs> um, the Boston Celtics entered this uh, 2022 NBA draft with the 53rd overall pick and rumors that I addressed yesterday that they might be looking to move into the uh, first round of the draft. They did not. Uh, they, there were a couple of targets that they, um, they might have tried to get into the first round for. Uh, there, are, there was the uh, Tari Eason pick that ended up going 17 to Houston, which was where most mock drafts had him. The Celtics were not you know, Eason was like Eason is the type of guy that if you're going to take a swing for somebody in the draft, he seems like the type of guy that the Celtics would have taken a swing on uh, six, seven versatile defender can shoot a little bit, seemed like the type of guy that they were going to go after. But Brad Stevens said uh, after the, after the draft, literally I, I talked to him, probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes before I was recording, before we started recording here. Um, He said the cost for moving up was just too much for where we are. And whether that was in the twenties or the thirties or the low forties, parting with significant players on our team, parting with draft assets that you can use with these TPEs, the trade deadline, those types of things didn't make much sense. That's what Brad Stevens said. So, and that was the rumor. Like you trade a future first round pick to get this year's first round pick plus a player. Now, who would that player have been? Anything that look the Celtics or Brad said significant players on our team. So one of the rumors was Grant Williams. That's a significant player on this team. They weren't going to trade him. Peyton Pritchard, Aaron Neesmith Pritchard. I think you could consider him a significant player on this team. So no, they, they weren't going to trade with him, uh, part with him. I, I'm okay with it, but like, you know, I'm not running an NBA team. Aaron Neesmith, they might, they might still value him pretty highly. We see the stuff with Neesmith on the floor and, and well, we don't see the behind the scenes stuff. We don't, we don't know exactly what that his, his overall impact is behind the scenes and how much he's, he's, they like him and all of that stuff. So that's all, um, that's all part of the, the thought process. So the Celtics were not able to trade up, they weren't going to spend what they needed to spend. And when you look at the overall draft, it was, there were some trades for sure. And I'll talk in the third segment, I'll talk about the the rest of the draft. I'm going to spend, like, I'll get into the uh, Davison selection. At this point, I'll save it for the second, second um, segment. In the third segment, I'll talk about what the other teams did that impact the Celtics. But There were some trades in the draft. New York Knicks were like really active. Charlotte, as expected, moved one of their picks. And I thought that might've been a place where Boston could have sent, uh, made made a deal. Houston uh, didn't with uh, that 17th pick. They're going to end up keeping that pick. So, um, you know, and Easton's going to be good there. I think East, I think Easton's going to fit. He's the type of guy that that could probably fit and make an impact just about anywhere. So it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise that the Celtics didn't move up. I said it in yesterday's podcast. I didn't think the Celtics were going to go all out like some of the rumors had said. I thought that. There was interest. I think they they wanted to move higher to see, you know. But every team want every every team below wants to move up for the right price, and I think every team above will explore trading back if the player that they want is uh, back there. And there's there's all this stuff. So for people who were expecting the Celtics, hey, maybe they'll move up, and maybe they, you know, that was never that was never really going to happen. What what I expected, actually, what I expected was maybe a draft and stash, but they either way, 
this might as well be a draft and stash. Like, what's the difference between picking a guy in Central Europe and and develop letting him develop over two years overseas and picking a guy like Davison who's 19 and raw and you're developing him for two years on your roster on the back end of your roster is there is there that much difference I don't think so I'll talk more about Davison when I come back first let me talk to you about NBA Jam it is back arcade one up the leader in home retro arcade games is not only bringing back the best game ever they've made it bigger than ever with a shack edition machine people are obsessed with NBA Jam for good reason you should be obsessed with NBA Jam it's the best game ever and I am thrilled to tell you that you can once again play hoops with NBA legends in this arcade classic You know how NBA Jam goes, jump clear across the court, set the ball on fire. It's one of the first sports games to ever feature real digitized NBA licensed teams. No fouls, no free throws, no quarters needed. You can compete with friends and family through all new Wi-Fi leaderboards, making you more connected than ever. Pre-order now from Arcade 1UP, that's Arcade, the number one, up.com for an estimated early September ship date. Arcade 1UP is the place for fun. They've got even more classics like Golden Tee. Everybody loves playing Golden Tee. Mortal Kombat, many others, all just starting at $3.99. And they are giving away NBA Jam Shack Edition to one of you locked on listeners. Enter for a chance to win the game console for your man cave or wherever. Arcade1up.com slash locked on. That's arcade the number one up.com slash locked on. You have until July 8th to enter to win NBA Jam Shack Edition. Don't miss out. Enter today. Who are you going to play with? Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Make Locked On NBA your second listen. I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. Uh, It's a great recap of the day in the NBA. Normally... Uh, there are games to talk about, but we'll be talking about free agency. Uh, there will be a draft recap on this Friday locked on NBA. I don't think they're going to get into JD Davison though, but they will be talking about a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about in the third segment. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this was a, a crazy draft. I think for some of these teams for the Celtics, it was a quiet draft. Who is JD Davison? Uh, why should we care about JD Davison? Because He's he's a long-term project. Let's be honest here. He's a long-term project. And first of all, it didn't work out for the Celtics. So he wasn't part of the pre-draft workouts. And the pre-draft workouts were a little bit kind of thrown off by the fact that the Celtics were making a run to the NBA Finals. So I think some of, some of the workouts were kind of all over the place, but whatever. They still get – some people react to – what do you mean he didn't work out for the team? Well, I mean, first of all, it's the 50, 53rd overall pick. Let, let's be honest. You sit there and you say, why did the Celtics pick a guard? A 19-year-old guard, 6'3"? Like, what? why? How does he fit? Probably doesn't. But a lot of what the, what the second round is, especially – at the very end of the second round, there were 58 picks in this draft. This was pick number 53. And normally, under normal circumstances, there is absolutely no coverage of this kind of pick. Because, so what? Like, normally, you have, if you have a first-round pick, you say, okay, here's the first-round pick. And then, also, by the way, they drafted this guy. Because chances are he's not going to make the team. Chances are that, okay, if he makes the team, he's part of a two-way. Or maybe he does make the end of the bench, but chances are he's a two-way guy, right? And so he signs a two-way deal and goes through the whole process, and there's no real pressure on him and, and none of that stuff. But why, why this guy in particular? Well, I'm sure he was on a list somewhere, but more than likely – 
it was going down the set of guys and saying, Hey, will you accept a two-way deal? No. Okay. Bye. Hey, will you accept a two-way deal? Yeah. Okay. We're picking Davison. Like that might, that might just be it. That's how a lot of the second round works where some of it is scouting and you say, Oh my God, this guy is, is fallen. And we're going to, the more he falls, you're like, Oh my God, we might be able to get him. That's not what happened here. They said, okay, here's a list of guys that we like. Now, Davidson is super athlete. He is, you know, he's 6'3". He's going to play in summer league. He's going to dunk on people, and he's going to be a phenom. I'm telling you right now, he's going to dunk on somebody. People are going to go, oh, my God. There are going to be gifts and, and memes and all of this stuff. He's got this awesome hair. He, he's, he looks the part. He's super, super athletic. Even though he's at 6'3", he's just going to he's going to obliterate people in summer league. Obliterate them. Now he's going to make mistakes because he's he's still very very raw. He's not a great shooter, he's not great at a whole lot of other things, but he's a tremendous athlete. And in summer league, tremendous athletes really shine. And he will probably look good and people will very very, uh, I think, definitely, if if he does shine, they will overreact because that's what people do in summer league. It's possible that uh, there will be some buzz coming out of summer league for him. However, my guess is that he doesn't earn a guaranteed contract. He's here for a two-way deal. And they'll just keep him on the two way. And if the first year goes well, then maybe you get him back for the second year. But for now, I, I you know, Brad said a lot about this guy. You like, he's, um, he, I mean, you say all the right things. He's had some incredible games. He's had some games where he looks like a freshman. He's consistently competed. Um, you know, all of these, all of these things. He, 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 Praises his athleticism, praises his drive, praises all it. But the reality of this pick is he probably was the first guy when they were on the clock uh, that said, yeah, I will, I will accept a two-way deal. So they said, okay, sure. He's on their list of guys. Eh, sure. Why not? Let's see. Because you have a guy at, at that size – who can get downhill in college, like almost half of his, his shots came at the rim. Well, that's great. And if he can get downhill, then sure. The, the, the tools, the tools are there, but also the tools are there for a lot of guys. There are tools there for just about everybody in this draft. You don't get drafted in the NBA without having, some tools, right? Like you have to be some kind of good player or have some sort of upside. So Davison is probably going to be a two-way player, but I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing myself for him to like dunk on three people and I will go crazy to him. Oh my God. And I'll be the, I'll clip it and send it out and Gifts will be shared and it'll be, it'll be wild. It'll be a fun week and a half or two weeks at summer league. And then reality will strike and he will come to training camp and he will look bad and he will get a two way slot. And then he will go to the, the, not the red claws, the main Celtics. It's going to take me a while, by the way, to not say red claws. I'm going to be saying red claws for quite some time. Um, He'll go to Maine and he will go through his ups and downs and maybe have some good games and maybe have some bad ones. And then we'll see. Then we'll see. Maybe he develops. Maybe being picked 53rd is something that puts a chip on his shoulder. Maybe he can be the diamond in the rough. Maybe he's some guy that comes in in the future or and, and contributes or he finds that jump shot or he finds some level of defense. He picks things up well. There's, there's all sorts of ways that can go. 
he could he could be cut in training camp or he could go and be a second round success story people go wow i can't believe this dude fell to 53 so don't know where he's going to go in that direction but monster monster athlete get ready for some highlights in summer league there are other highlights from the draft a few teams that were very very interesting very intriguing celtics competition the draft quiet for the celtics but their competition was doing some stuff i'll talk about that after we talk about bet online your number one source for all of your betting needs and info you know at the top van carroll actually did go number one and all of the betting I got to I got to wonder how all of the betters knew that that was going to happen before any of the reporters knew that that was going to happen. All the betting lines moved heavily in Bancaro's favor. And then they it, things got weird and all of a sudden he's the number 1 pick. And that was uh that was a little bit of a surprise. So uh whatever. Anyway, you could have gone to bet online to check that out. You can find all of the latest sports developments, league news, reviews, including the Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball, uh, fights, MMA, boxing. You want golf? It's all there at BetOnline. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head on over to the website. You can use your mobile device. It works there. To learn more about the trends and action, BetOnline is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. You know, it's funny. I had this whole big, like, Santa beard thing working, and it was fine. Shaving it into this stupid little monkey tail, it's driving me nuts. It's just, I can't wait to shave this scraggly thing off. And it's all uneven. It's just, oh, horrible, horrible. Um, thanks, Chuck McKinney. Anyway. The Celtics were quiet, but a few other teams were very interesting in the East. Sixers, Charlotte, Detroit, and New York all did things that were very interesting to me. And set the. this is very important to the Celtics. This could change a lot of the dynamics in the East. Let's start with the Knicks, who traded, um, if we can sum this up, they traded the 11th pick in Kemba Walker. They got back three future firsts. Oh, they traded away four second round picks too. So I can't, I'm not going to go through all of the crazy machinations. There was, there was a fun moment uh, during the draft where on Twitter, if you're not on Twitter, good for you. But if you're not on Twitter, when Shams and Woj are constantly trying to announced things there there was a, a battle the Woj and Shams battle between where the Knicks were trading um Jalen Duran oh wait where the the Hornets were trading Jalen Duran and Woj had it to Detroit Shams had it to New York really both were right because he went to New York where the Knicks attached Kemba Walker Basically, the Knicks finagled it where they said, okay, no, we'll get you Duran to Detroit, but you got to take Kemba Walker. And they did. They're going to they're, they're gonna buy him out. So Kemba Walker is going to become a free agent. But the Knicks basically facilitated a trade in an effort to get Kemba Walker out that got Duran, a big man, to Detroit. So, and Charlotte gets uh, some picks out of it. They they wanted to, they didn't want to make both picks. They're trying to they're trying to manage their cap. Whatever, the Knicks are clearly opening up cap space. They're trying everything they can to clear up cap space. They're getting these future picks. They get three future first round picks. Those are going to be used probably to try to add talent to their bench. Kemba is out. They're trying to get Jalen Brunson from Dallas. That'll be a nice move. They're hoping that Brunson. And Randall and Barrett can be like this, their sort of big three. Brunson at the point, uh, Barrett on the wing, Randall kind of like in the middle there. I think that's a, that's a decent, that's a decent little plan. I don't know what that's gonna get you, 
still feels like a middle of the road team, but fifth seed, sixth seed, fourth seed. I don't, I don't think they're a, that's a, depends on what else they do, but anyway, the Knicks are making moves and they're trying to get Jalen Brunson. Uh, it feels like they are, they, they have a good idea. I don't know if they would make these moves if they didn't think they could get Jalen Brunson, but anyway, that's what the Knicks are doing. So the Knicks in this draft were very interesting. Kemba Walker is an interesting guy. He's going to be out there in the free agent market. Where does he go? Um, I don't think Boston makes a run at Kemba. I just think they, just like Isaiah Thomas in a way, they say, thanks for the memories. It was great having you here. Enjoy your time wherever. And that's going to be where one of the, is it going to be the Lakers? Depends what happens with Kyrie Irving. That's a whole other thing. Kyrie Irving and it, Ky- Kyrie Irving's potentially on the way out. If they can't reach a long-term deal. He gave the, um, the Nets a list of teams and the Lakers is on that list. Could you have all of a sudden on the Lakers, if you, trade Russell Westbrook, a backcourt of Kyrie Irving and Kemba Walker. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, But Kemba is going to be a free agent. I don't think Boston's going to have any interest. I would be surprised. Um, But just like IT, I hope he gets a shot because he deserves a shot. Just that it's just not going to fit with the Celtics. I don't think, I don't think he's going to want the type of opportunity that Boston's going to give him, which you know, they're, they're going to want somebody who plays defense and he, he's just not going to be able to play defense. So sorry, Kimba. I'd love to have you back. I love Kimba Walker. He's a great dude. Um, great for the locker room. I mean, maybe that's enough to have him back, but he's going to want to play. He didn't, he's not going to sign with a team to be like veteran leadership. He's going to want to play. So we'll see what happens with the Walker saga. Knicks are a team to watch this summer. I think the Detroit Pistons are a team to watch too. So they get Duran, they get Jaden Ivey, and they get that basically in exchange for Jeremy Grant because the pick that they got in the Grant trade is what they used to move uh, Duran uh, in that in that deal to 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 acquire Duran. So you get Ivey who is an intriguing perimeter player, Cunningham, who I think is going to be a stud, obviously. Duran, who is, um, you know, a a big time athlete that can, uh, I think, you know, we'll see, but it could be, could be a a two-way guy that helps them, you know, solidify their, their front court defensively. They've got some, they've got some talent in Detroit. They got plenty of talent in Detroit that they have, maybe even a little too much. They're going to have to consolidate some of it. I think Killian Hayes might be on the way out, but however it goes, they'll, they can consolidate some of their talent at some point, but we know Detroit was a pain in this past season. They were, they were just rough. No matter how well the Celtics were playing, the the Pistons were a tough out. Now you add a couple of big time talents. They, that could be, that could be a big deal for the Pistons. I don't know if it's a big deal right now, this upcoming season, we'll see. It's, it's a lot to ask a couple of rookies, but Cunningham is taking another step. But two years from now, three years from now, I mean, that's that's right in the middle of the Celtics championship window. You're going to be facing the Detroit Pistons, big, physical, tough Pistons team. That's going to be one of those first-round matchups that – or second-round matchups that teams don't want. The, the, the Pistons, I think, are doing it the right way. They're a team to watch out for. Which for me, honestly, as a guy who grew up in the 80s, uh, watching 80s basketball, that's kind of fun for me. One of the highlights of the finals, I didn't tell this story. Uh, I got to meet Isaiah Thomas, like the Pistons Isaiah Thomas, NBA TV Isaiah Thomas. I walked up to him, I said, I'm going to pay you the biggest possible compliment I could pay you. I grew up watching the Celtics in the 80s, and I absolutely hated you. And he was, he just looked at me and he goes, thank you. Cause he knows, he knows exactly why that's a compliment because it's not personal. It's just that 
I hated that team. I hated him. And you got to be damn good to be hated that much. It's like, to me, if I was if of a rival of a fan of a rival of mine said, oh, I hated you growing up, be like, hell yeah, you did. I would love that compliment. That's the best thing anybody could tell me. Cause that means I was torching you. You know, I was doing something to your team that made you go, ah, this guy. That's the best compliment I could possibly give him. So Detroit being good is kind of fun to me. I like, I want Detroit to be good. I think Celtics Detroit is just an all time classic playoff matchup that just because I'm me and where, when I grew up, I know a lot of people might not care, especially the younger generation. You'd be like, yeah, who cares about that? But to me, that's a rivalry that's laid dormant that I would love to see rekindled. Uh, Also, look, the Charlotte Hornets are such an interesting team. They got Mark Williams, a athletic and athletic shot blocking, lob catching, floor running kind of big who could be really interesting next to LaMelo Ball. And it's, I mean, again, a rookie coming in, you don't expect to make an immediate impact, but Charlotte is an interesting team. They're looking to potentially move Gordon Hayward or Terry Rozier or Kelly Oubre. And that's because they need to make room to pay Miles Bridges because Jordan's not going to pay the luxury tax. So they have to move things around. But look, Williams, rookie or not, if he's able to give them some solid minutes and be the shot blocker that look naturally he can be, he'll probably get a bunch of fouls and he'll probably be very frustrated sometimes, but there'll be games where he blocks four or five shots and the Hornets look great because he's blocking a shot. It gets up to LaMelo. He's trailing a play ball goes up off the backboard as a pass and he's finishing the play. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Charlotte trying to move into that playoff nuisance role. So they're a team to watch with the move that they made in this. Another team to watch this summer. And then quickly, the Sixers trading 23 and Danny Green. Danny Green is out for the season probably with an ACL tear. So he's kind of done. They get DeAnthony Melton from Memphis, a little bit of bench scoring, uh, some decent shooting, a little bit of rebounding. He does a little bit of everything, rebounding, assists, steals. So they help their bench. Sixers, an interesting team. They were on Kyrie Irving's list. Would they do that? I don't know if they would, but Sixers are re- retooling their bench. Melton, I mean, not a needle mover, but helps. And anything that helps another team hurts Boston. Anything that helps a potential playoff team the Celtics might face hurts the Celtics because this is one more guy that you go have to worry about off the bench. So that's my takeaway from the NBA draft night. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for suggesting this dumb monkey tail beard thing. It's, um, I can't believe that people do this on purpose. I can't believe that somebody would say, oh yeah, that watch how I shave my face. I'm going to basically put the number six on the side of my, it's not a monkey tail. It's just a number six on the side of my face is really what it looks like. Or maybe a, a con or like one of those clefts, the musical clef, something like that. If I had like a couple of dots that I could put behind it, whatever it is, it's stupid. And I'm going to shave it off as soon as I possibly can. I cannot wait. But because y'all raised $1,000 for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and Heather Walker's glioblastoma fundraiser, uh, that's this is my look. This has been my look for the show. Promised it. You guys delivered. So I delivered. Thank you so much for doing so. Back to normal on Monday. Whew, thank God. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing the podcast and telling your friends, your family, everybody. 
they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.